The term design is used in so many contexts that it is difficult to interpret what it is as a whole. Sometimes I question whether the field at all exists and if it is but a module used for any purpose. Narrowing its purpose and objectifying it limits its value. The trouble with our times is that the future is not what it used to be. Art is like masturbation. It is selfish and introverted and done for you and you alone. Design is like sex. There is someone else involved. Their needs are just as important as your own. Sometimes designers have very bad sex, so they keep on masturbating. History was the measure of genuine novelty, and those who sell novelty at any price have made the means of measuring it disappear. When the important makes itself socially recognized as what it is instantaneous and will still be the other and the same the instant afterwards, and will always replace another instantaneous importance, one can say that the means employed guarantee a sort of eternity of non-importance that speaks loud. The agitator is the cerebral aggressor, the first in, last out, perpetrator of change, the constant adulterer to impost system. What kind of reductive design might result in a world where there is no more need for designs? Each and every new product is supposed to offer a dramatic shortcut to the long-awaited promised land of total consumption. As such, it is ceremoniously presented as the unique and ultimate product. But, as with the fashionable adoption of seemingly rare aristocratic first names, which turn out to be, in the end, to be borne by a whole generation, so the would-be singularity of an object can be offered to the eager hordes only if it has been mass-produced. The sole real status attaching to a mediocre object of this kind is to have been placed, however briefly, at the very centre of social life, and hailed as the revelation of the goal of the production process. But even this spectacular prestige evaporates into vulgarity as soon as the object is taken home by a consumer, and hence by all other consumers too. At this point, its essential poverty, the natural outcome of the poverty of its production, stands revealed too late. For by this time, another product will have been assigned to supply the system with this justification, and will in turn be demanding its moment of acclaim. The design is the only defense against the danger of being designed. Today we have to decide whether design or be designed. When we accept the bourgeois criteria that sanctions necessity as indignant and he who expresses his needs as weak and vulgar, we participate in the systematic reduction of creativity and freedom in which contemporary culture could manifest. He who can do anything by itself is the perfect consumer. When I was looking around, I had the feeling many projects were actually designs reflecting design issues rather than real issues affecting society or anything outside the design field. In a way, I have the feeling that design being understood by a broad public is a good thing and that designs who are more visualizations of inner design issues were less relevant. These designs were the most outspoken ones though, but isn't it a good thing that the gap between the design audience is getting small? And now the gap is small, let's make a job out of really change the system and make the ideas, visions shown in the design week applicable for 95% of all products being produced nowadays. If you want to become a designer with completely new ideas, study mechanics or science or do sociology or something else non-design related and afterwards apply it to the design process, that will give the real other perspective on design needed to give design a new impulse. If you want to make design stuff reaching further boundaries, apply to movie making, politics, banking, biology or something else outside of the field. Design. I like it. I have it. But I want it and I don't have it. Will I ever need it? Most of what I saw on Dutch Design Week was affirmative design. Furthermore, self-affirmative design. On a week where design and designers are celebrated and glorified, very little questions arise inquiring the relevance of the profession. Hundreds of chairs, tables and objects, thousands of euros spent and tens of thousands of vis visitors in Eindhoven. And still, we feel the urge to ask, what real value is bringing design to society? We want to question the prevailing structures of design profession, which are built on self-glorification rather than a true and real legitimation for society. There seems to be a lack of a self-critical attitude from designers, which makes design events mere mediatic shows, spectacles in the board's terms, rather than radiographies of the state of affairs of a certain place and moment of society. You people are great to do this. 